um, I think one thing that I really would like to make it clear here is that this movie was made before March 11, 2011. And so I'm sure we have a lot to talk about in light of what has been going on in Japan today since then. And so in the second half part of this symposium, I'm going to ask Ms. Kamanaka, the filmmaker, to moderate um, the, um, the whole session. So I just am going to enjoy the second half myself. <laughs> uh, thank you for introducing um, my film. And uh, thank you for bringing me and my film here at UCLA. I'm very happy to have all of you. Thank you so much. And, uh, uh, and I know my English is very poor, so please stand with my English. Uh, so I, I'm going to talk about, uh, so Japan, uh, we have 54 nuclear power plants. And uh, now operating only three. And we don't have any problem, uh, kind of uh, shortage of electricity. So then people started wondering why you had, we have so much, so many nuclear power plants. And it's kind of mystery. <laughs> so I'm uh, explaining my film uh, films. So I made a trilogy. So it started from this film, Hibakusha at the end of the world. So this is my beginning, uh, stacking this theme that nuclear and also radiation and, and uh, radio activities. And then I made a uh, second film, Rokkasho Rhapsody. So Rokkasho village is a place where all whole spent nuclear, whole, whole spent nuclear, uh, nanda. Uh, spent nuclear fuel yeah, goes to this village and reprocess to take plutonium out. So this is a very front of uh, nuclear industries in Japan. So then I made this film. Then third one is Ashes to Honey. What should we do with future energy? But uh, when I completed it, then I had a press conference then uh, many journalists came, and then they asked them, please write about this film. And nobody wrote. <laughs> and they just uh, left after film screening, and then nobody write about it. So media kind of kept silence about this issue. So then I started. Um, putting out information by internet, Twitter and the Facebook, and then uh, slowly uh, uh, my audience was increasing. Then when I was showing this film at the theater uh, in the middle of Tokyo, March 11th, earthquake <laughs> came. So since then, uh, already 500 places this film was shown in Japan, it's almost uh, organized by uh, grassroots people. And then widely spread and still going on. So this film at the first uh, of nuclear trilogy, so I started from Iraq. So because I met Iraqi children who had leukemia. And uh, I didn't know why. And at that time there was a sanction and then uh, United Nations prohibited other countries to export uh, chemotherapy drug to Iraq. So they had to die. And uh, this girl uh, named Russia, and uh, I witnessed so many children just passed away. And then I was so shocked. And I had only camera, and uh, mothers of children were kind of screaming, why you have a camera without bringing medicine? So then I told them that if I tell Japanese people what's going on in Iraq, then more drugs might, might come. And then they started helping me uh, interviewing many children, but uh, almost of them passed away already. And then, so they talked about depleted uranium weapons, which used at the Gulf War. 
because I visited Iraq for the first time in 1998. This is Iraqi tank, uh, which is destroyed by uh, depleted uranium weapons, and it is like this. It's almost United States made. And uh, on this small one, smallest one destroyed this tank. And this time, uh, Fukushima nuclear power plant, the fuel, uranium fuel, melted down. It was 2,800 degree. And then uh, this depleted uranium hit this tank, and then it burned with 3,000 degree Celsius. Celsius. And then I, th I think it is the same. It becomes became plume like a radioactive air, aerosol. And it absorbed into the air and then contaminate the environment. And uh, this is, um, I found, 1998 in the desert of Iraq. And uh, underground of this desert, there's uh, uh, oil. It's a second largest around the world. It's called uh, Lumeila. And uh, this is a facility where uh, sucking, hmm? how to say, it? you say it, you say it. The, no, the, 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 the pumping, yeah, pumping, pumping facility from underground, and then long way uh, to uh, sono, eto, gasoline <laughs> finery, refinery, refinery, and uh, it's all destroyed by this depleted uranium weapons, and I measured how much radiation this has, and it was 3.8 micro sievert per hour. Now in Fukushima, uh, much, much more radiation we can measure. So I started feeling when I, I saw this. So Gulf War and the Iraqi War, uh, it is about the war kind of uh, getting oil. So they, they like to have a right to get oil. And using this depleted uranium weapons, this came from nuclear industries. So I think energy program concentrate this uh, image. So I really started doubt about atom for peace. And uh, so so many destroyed destroyed tank in in the desert, and then it's kind of uh, sailed by children, piece by piece. And then they kind of contaminated their body. So this is uh, uh, Iraqi children who got leukemia and cancers. See, a Kuwait and non-Kuwait non and Iraq and Japan. How many uh, children get cancer, uh, boy and girl? So in Japan, 10 among uh, 100,000. And then Kuwait, 14, and Iraq, 17.8. So it's increasing. So uh, I was really uh, started thinking that uh, the society who is killing, which is killing children by uh, contamination of radioactivity, I think it has no future. So I wanted to change it. That's why I made a film, Hibaksha. And Hibaksha is about <coughs> internal radiation exposure uh, among people who is living on contaminated land. And in Hibaksha, I visited Iraq and also uh, United States Hanford, the downwinders of Hanford site. It was a uh, uh, Manhattan project started. And then most of nuclear weapons were made. Plutonium was made at that facilities. So then I found out also I'm responsible about this weapon because uh, in Japan we are using nuclear power plants and also uh, 
relying on the United States to produce enriched uranium. And then if you enrich uranium, automatically depleted uranium came out. And then uh, I think United States government is producing this weapon. So the second one, Rokas Rhapsody. So I focused on uh, this woman, Keiko Kikukawa, and uh, she is the only one who uh, obviously uh, against the uh, reprocessing plant. And the villages, uh, um, 12,000 population, among 12,000 population, only a couple uh, people against the uh, reprocessing facilities, and she is uh, one. And uh, this guy is a supporter. So I, I kind of made a cost. I portrayed uh, Kikawa san and also like supporters, also science, scientists. And then various kinds of people, I asked about the same thing, and everybody said uh, different things. So then I portrayed it like a um, mirror. So Rokkashu Rhapsody, the film itself is like a mirror because I didn't push on my message clearly in, in this film. And then young people really like this film. And, and so the grassroots uh, screening was spread over 600 places. And then kind of a new movement started in Japan. So then, uh, I had to make another film, it was uh, Ashes to Honey, because uh, many young people wanted to have solution, not only against to, or not only anti-nuclear. We like to have alternative uh, solution. That's how they said. So I met Takashi, and also Takashi wanted to uh, be uh, independent, in independent uh, energy at the uh, that uh, Iwaishima. So I decided to go to Sweden as a model of uh, new, uh, renewable energy independency. So I like to e explain this is Japanese energy policy. Uh, this is called a nuclear uh, cycle plan. It means that the contamination goes around. This is my uh, explanation. So one uh, nuclear power plant, uh, spent nuclear fuel, extract 30 tons. And then at Rokkasho reprocessing plant, plutonium uh, take out. But uh, no way to use plutonium. And also at the end, you get the high level nuclear waste. So this you have to keep one million years. So supposedly, we <coughs> use plutonium as a fuel for fast breeder reactor, but this is a fail. But on uh, the process, in the process of reprocessing uh, nuclear sp spent nuclear fuel, uh, releasing radioactive gas to the air and also the ocean. So it goes to uh, sea, sea coast of, of uh, Pacific Ocean side. Hmm. So this was huge problem before Fukushima, but uh, Fukushima happened. So now the contamination goes like this. And then in the world. So here, west coast of United States. So here is Fukushima. But this may be uh, Dan going to talk about. So then I don't talk about a lot. So also air. Tokyo is here. Fukushima is here. And then this is a simulation, simulation by uh, Speedy. It's called um, uh, supercomputer. Uh, calculated how uh, how much uh, radioactive contamination uh, spread around Japan. So Tokyo, I'm living here, and 210 <coughs> kilometers away from Fukushima, and uh, partially heavily contaminated. And I, I interviewed to a doctor from Belarus, from Chernobyl area, and uh, she says children shouldn't leave this area, even in Tokyo. Mm. 
that problem. But still, uh, in Fukushima Prefecture, around this area, many children, uh, 36,000. 360,000 children uh, under uh, 15 years old still living in this area. That's very problem. So I feel they need to escape. But Japanese government saying, you can, okay, you can stay here, okay, no problem. So it's such a low level radiation contamina contamination, so that's why so they chose to stay in Fukushima. So, but many, now many citizen groups asking them to escape. But we need to have a uh, house and uh, uh, work for father, and it really cost. And uh, TEPCO is not really supporting. So, so um, I think it, it's one of the biggest problems after Fukushima disaster. So see, this is a contaminated milk and contaminated by uh, radioactive iodine, also cesium, and they just throwing away every day. So milk pond was created and uh, she is saying goodbye to the cow because they all contaminated and uh, she's crying. And this is a honey. Uh, near Fukushima area, and uh, we measured it was 3,700 becquerel. So becquerel means uh, one kilogram. Each one, one kilogram has 3,700 spectrum of radioactive cesium. If you eat it, it goes into your body. So it means you exposed from inside, inside of your body. So now in Japan, uh, when I've been making this, these three films, uh, most difficult things was uh, people are not interested in this issue. So, and also uh, the message from electric company and also Japanese government was saying that uh, you don't need to think about energy, we do. So let us do. And then they never interested in uh, radioactive contamination and also uh, how radioactivity does to your body. So now I'm lecturing uh, radioactive particles spread over and then it affects the human body, how it affects. So I like you to see this image. This is a plutonium particles, this small one. And this is a, a human body tissue uh, kept from a Nagasaki atomic bomb. So this person died, but the tissue was taken <coughs> off. And then uh, just recently, Nagasaki University successfully taken photo, photo of uh, plutonium particle uh, emitting spectrum after 66 years. But you know, plutonium has uh, ability to emitting uh, spectrum maybe 29 million years forever. So what happens in your body? You have DNA and then cut by spectrum, but you have also uh, ability to repair. But uh, now we have a report from Chernobyl, uh, sometimes uh, spectrum uh, destroy P53 on DNA. So P53 DNA uh, parts is uh, especially uh, does a role to repair. And if you lose it, you cannot repair. Then chromosome damage or deformation starts. That's how uh, radio activity does human body uh, deformation, but it takes time. So 
also definition between external radiation exposure and internal radiation exposure. People don't know what is, how different it is. And also, I think uh, just after Hiroshima and Nagasaki, American government was saying that the, uh, if you get uh, this uh, alpha st spectrum, it's so weak, nothing. And also, it's the same thing they are saying about depleted <coughs> uranium missiles. And uh, this emit alpha spectrum, it, it's nothing. But uh, if once into, we get in, into our body, then really it does uh, ionize, ionization effect. So alpha spectrum. Uh, so nowadays, we are using uh, radioactive isotopes. Oh, yeah, isotopes to uh, cure cancer. And then, so they found out if we use materials emitting alpha spectrum, 10 years later, so can cancers uh, start. So many uh, patients uh, used um, uh, some kind of uh, barium to get the X-ray. Then it was alpha spectrum. And then uh, they found out uh, this really effective patient who really had this barium. Uh, many of them got uh, cancers. So now it became a common that you never use alpha spectrum uh, isotope for medication. So only beta and gamma. So if you get the, this is uranium, and then this is alpha spectrum, then really destroy DNA, and then you get affected. So, but this kind of knowledge, we never studied and learned at the school. I never, I, I don't have any experience that learned something about this kind of information. So now in Japan, many young mothers really care about their children because they, are, they, they have chance to eat contaminated food because of Fukushima. So they started interested in this issue and then started learning and, and, and started understanding what's going on. And, um, but still, Japanese government wants to keep a uh, nuclear power plant in Japan. And then I get uh, many interviews from journalists why Japan won't change uh, from Australia, from France, and from Germany, and, and then also from Japanese journalists. And then I especially I tell Japanese journalists, so did you change? But Japanese media, it has been not changing at all. So uh, since then, since uh, Fukushima disaster, we found out we have a uh, uh, nuclear, it's so-called nuclear community. It's a huge group of politicians and the bureaucrats and the electronic companies and the large corporations and the media and the scientists. They promote the nuclear power and uh, these groups benefit from the nuclear community. And they continue to believe in their power. And they mean the Japanese people. Uh, many universities, I showed this film, and then I asked Japanese university students that, how do you think about uh, electric company? And uh, so those students going to graduate uh, universities, and they are looking for uh, jobs, and then they are really afraid to criticize TEPCO and electric company because they are afraid not uh, getting into big company to get a job. Uh, they are really afraid to talk about clearly. And uh, so this bureaucrat supports a nuclear community so recently, we found, we found that almost 5,000 people, the same, working as uh, before 
Fukushima disaster, and after Fukushima disaster, same people, 5,000 5, bureaucrats, are supporting nuclear power. It is very, very difficult to change. So then I showed uh, Iwaishima. So uh, Chugoku Electric Company going to build two nuclear power plants around here, 3.5 kilometers away. And um, so you saw uh, biodiversity and uh, supporting Iwaishima people's life. And the same uh, small people and big company, it's kind of contrast between uh, big company always win. But uh, so Takashi's father was saying that even one day we can delay the plan. So now uh, Yamaguchi Prefecture, they decided 